welcome back to the show and uh, yesterday I finished up the back side of the garage and I did a video on how to put um, your outside corner and inside corner on and then when I got home I downloaded it to a new hard drive and something went wrong and I lost it all so I'll quick show you guys the outside corner and inside corner and I have more to do over by the porch so when I get to that um, I'll show you how to do that but here's how it looks once you get it up is this bottom piece will sit on the bottom trim and then you bring it up and you notch you make a notch here and then it extends up to like right here and then your top piece overlaps it and sits on the wainscot trim so you get a nice finished look here's the back side of the house got it all done um, all I got left is the porch underneath the porch and we're gonna get after that today um, I probably won't I'm not gonna get it done today cuz I got a lot of windows cut around but there are a couple things I can share with you with this and we will start out with this piece right here so between all my windows like um, here there even up above between the windows I planned it out well I didn't really plan it out there's a rib in between each space which stiffens this piece it just so happens that this piece right here there's no rib so as you can see it's pretty flimsy so what I'm doing is I got this hem trim it's just a straight trim and I cut it to length from here up to there and then I'm gonna slip it on over this edge so it'll give this some rigidity and it'll give it a nice clean look um, I only really need to do it on one side um, and I'm choosing this side because if you're on the porch and you're looking you'll see and it'll be a nice finished edge this side tucks way under there um, but we're gonna get that up my plan is just to pull this out a little bit and then slide it all the way up I don't know if I can do that or not we're gonna see All right, so you can see I got that in there. It gives that a nice finished look. It gives it some rigidity. So I'm gonna put my screws back in and then we should be good to go. So you can see that just gives it a little bit nicer finish. I did scratch this trim right here, but I guess that's why they give you touch up paint. And I got a, a little problem here which I knew I would have based on where this door was and where my ribs were so I'm going to show you how I'm going to handle it so we have this rib that dies right here in this J trim and I knew this was going to happen um, I didn't really have a choice um, with my po my post spacing and uh, Good thing is it, is it is under my porch, so water is really not going to get up here anyway. But I want to, I still want to do it right, so I'm going to show you how to put your top trim on on a situation like this to keep water out. So you can see, um, I got this rib here, so I can't just notch this and slide my J trim in because it won't it won't go over this. So I'm going to have to cut this little section out. And once I cut that little section out, then I can notch it 
over and extend my J trim over um, a little bit further and then just use a little bit of caulk right here but you'll see once I get it up there so I got this marked I'm gonna cut this whole little section out because my J trim has got to come down to here but it's got to extend up past here so we'll just notch this section out and then I'll show you how I put my J trim on to finish this off um, so water can't uh, get down in there all right so you can see I cut that out right flush with the edge of this rib and then I actually filed that off because you want that nice and flat and then I notched it one inch past so it's gonna be the trim is gonna be extended a little further than usual but honestly nobody ever notices that stuff um, and it's the best way to make sure this is waterproof so now I'm just gonna put this piece of J trim in and uh, then it'll tuck up under there and it'll drop down and sit right on top of that and then you can just put a little clear silicone on there on that underneath where that seam is and it'll be good to go All right, so you can see, I gotta get all this fastened down, but that'll sit right flush there, and then water will come down, run out over here. And we're under this port, so it won't be a big deal anyway. All right, so we're gonna put up the corner trim, and it's pretty, fairly easy process. This is 36 inch Wayne's coating so what I do is I cut my bottom uh, corner trim at 38 inches. Once I do that I'll set it up there and then I'm gonna mark where my Wayne's coat trim is on the top and bottom. All right, so now that I got that marked, I'm gonna cut this down this seam, and then everything in here is gonna be taken out. And then that'll go up inside, or underneath the uh, Wayne's coat trim. So I'll cut all this out in here, and then that'll tuck up underneath.
I like to leave a little tab there and I'll show you why here in a second. So I just V it out and then instead of trying to cut that I just fold this over. And then you get a, not, a lot nicer finished look there than trying to cut it. All right, so you can see, notch this out. This will go up underneath the uh, trim <coughs> right here. And then the top corner trim will actually overlay this and it'll look real nice. All right, so you can see it's notched right there. It goes up underneath on both sides. And then we leave it extend up a couple inches. The bottom just sits down there. And then the top piece will tuck underneath your top trim. And then just set right on the top there. That's it. So, got all this done, got to screw that piece on, got all this done, just got to finish that up right down there, and then the house will uh, be pretty much done. All right, so the whole garage is done except for the front. Uh, waiting on garage doors. Here is some inside trim here. This is pretty simple to put up. Um, this is just inside corner here. And all you do is cut it the length of your uh, Wayne's coat. So this is three foot and it tucks up underneath your Wayne's coat trim and sits on your bottom trim. And then the top one sits on your Wayne's coat trim and then tucks up underneath your J trim or F channel or whatever you have up top. So, all right, well, I got everything underneath the porch uh, metaled. And then here around and above the door, we're gonna do stone. So I just gotta cover that with plywood. So we're coming right along. Um, it was a short show today. Um, we covered inside corner, outside corner, and uh, that was pretty much it. But um, all I have left here on the house is right here. I, that was just a temporary piece, so I got to put uh, put that in up there, and then I can come up to the garage door, put my corner trim on, and. Uh, then I'm ready for garage doors. So hopefully my garage doors will be in next week and I get that done. But appreciate you guys watching. Um, hopefully we'll get inside here pretty soon. Um, while I'm waiting for the spray foam guy, I'm working on a video on what exactly post frame construction is. The benefits, pros, cons, why I chose it over stick frame. Um, and stuff like that. So stay tuned for that video. Um, hopefully I'll get that out in the next week, week and a half. Um, it'll probably be interesting to a lot of people. There's been a lot of questions. Um, that I, so I think it'll be beneficial to a lot of people. So we're just going to keep plugging away and hopefully um, this weather will warm up a little bit and we can get uh, the spray foam insulation in. We can get all those questions answered and uh, keep moving forward. But thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you on the next video.